the Chiefs have a defensive tackle being accused of neglecting animals, making that yet another offseason situation. Harrison Butker recently doubled down on his commencement speech. Kylie Kelsey got in the face of a crazy drunk lady. Defensive back Nazi Johnson is almost ready to go this season. We've got to talk about all that and so much more. But first, how about those? All right, I'm back from the long holiday weekend, and we've got plenty of quick hitter Chiefs news to go over. For starters, it's been roughly 15 weeks since the Super Bowl victory. Yes and amen. And now there's only 15 weeks until the start of the NFL season, so we are halfway there. That means the Ravens face off against the Chiefs in an AFC Championship rematch of sorts in just 99 days. It was 100 days yesterday when this graphic was made, but now it's 99, so... Let's freaking go. And with that, we have OTAs in full swing here with the Chiefs working out three days a week for the next few weeks before mandatory mini camp mid June. Then they have until training camp basically off. You can see the Chiefs social media team in the meantime releasing a few clips featuring the CEO of SAC Nation getting some work in and looking nice and quick out there. Fourth round draft pick tight end Jared Wiley is out here catching passes, as is the Welshman running back Lewis Reese Zamet, who has been featured in a lot of Chiefs social media content since signing with the team back in March. And speaking of running backs, let's park the car here for a moment. Veteran LaMichael P. Ryan is now gone and he signed with the Steelers last week. And with that happening, many are now wondering which running back on the roster is gonna step up and claim that RB3 spot behind Isaiah Pacheco and Clyde edwards Lair. There's plenty of competition, such as the newly signed UDFAs in Carson Steele and Imani Bailey. Then there's the already rostered backs, such as Reese Zamet, Keontae Ingram, Hassan Hall, and Daenerik Prince. Prince signed with the team last offseason as a UDFA and can be seen training here. Very recent training footage with running back coach T360 Elite. Many were pulling for him last offseason to make the roster, but he wasn't quite ready and cooked for a year on the practice squad. And now that he's got a year under his belt, he's coming out hungry to try and earn that RB3 spot. And if the Chiefs don't end up bringing in a veteran such as Jarek McKinnon, Prince could certainly be in the running for that third spot. The third back is going to need to contribute on special teams for sure, which is why some think it could be Louis Reese Zamet as a returner given the new kick return rules, and then also have maybe some specific packages on the offense worked out for him. But this running back also needs to be able to contribute on offense in a pass protection manner for Patrick Mahomes. That's something Reese Zamet is not yet ready for and something Jarek McKinnon did very, very well. So they're most likely gonna need that third running back, not a third down back, but a third running back in case of injury who can also step in and protect Patrick Mahomes if needs be. You know, maybe that's CEH's primary role as of right now, uh, but time will surely tell. Either way, the running back room is gonna be an interesting one to watch as the weeks go by. Do they bring back McKinnon or do they opt, like Brett Veach said in a recent presser, to kind of let everybody else on the roster battle it out for that third spot. Anyway, on the subject of OTAs, it looks like the NFL PA is pushing for some off-season changes that some NFL players are not going to be happy about. Tom Pelissero reported that the NFL Players Association is working to finalize a proposal to overhaul the off-season as soon as next year, 2025. And basically, the premise is this. They want to eliminate the voluntary OTAs that the players are doing right now in the spring, which again is three-day weeks, approximately six hours a day for uh, three to four weeks. And instead, they want to make training camp longer. It would be a ramp up to training camp, though, starting mid-June, early July, that slowly prepares their body for more strenuous camp practices that will come later in July. The hope of this change, they say, is to reduce injury and maximize players' recovery time. Well, apparently a lot of players do support this change, which is why they are submitting it or trying to get the rule changed, talking about the NFLPA, though of course the NFL would have to actually agree and sign off on this idea. Now, it does look like meetings, virtual meetings could still happen during this May-June period, but again, no workouts would happen until later on. On one hand, it does make sense to have more of a ramp up period before everyone just starts going absolute bananas full out during training camp, especially with the NFL season eventually getting even longer. It's gonna one day here soon, maybe in a couple years, be 18 games, two bye weeks, and probably just two preseason games. Well, I definitely understand that aspect. Player safety, keep them safe. However, some players, especially those with kids, 
are not really in support of this idea. Typically, there's a six-week dry spell in the NFL from mid-June, that's once mandatory minicamp is over, all the way to the start of training camp at the end of July. And this is a time when the kids are out of school and players can spend that time with their families, go on vacation. A lot of times, June and July, Sean, better months to travel. You get to relax before training camp. In the new system they're proposing, you're going in mid-June, you're not done till January. And then of course, if you are a contender like the Chiefs, your season could go all the way until mid-February. Jeff Schwartz, shout out to him, just shared a clip of his uh, podcast. He goes on to say that the reasoning for this push is to help prevent injuries during the season. I talked about that a, a minute ago, but he then says, there's not really enough evidence at this point in time to show this to even be true. And I guess that's where I wanna get your thoughts and opinions on this. Do you like the idea of players having more time off in the spring for a longer ramp up to training camp late June? Or do you like how it currently is with training of sorts happening in the spring and time off for the players in the summer prior to training camp so they can spend time with their families, with their kids out of school? I realize uh, this doesn't really affect us as fans either way, but I'm still curious to read your thoughts on this. Something that I don't really care to read many of your thoughts on because it's gonna be extremely divisive either way is what Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker said at another recent event. He spoke at a Catholic gala and did weigh in a bit since his commencement speech went viral a couple weeks ago and everybody lost their minds. Over the past few days, my beliefs, or what people think I believe, have been the focus of countless discussions around the globe. At the outset, many people expressed a shocking level of hate. But as the days went on, even those who disagreed with my viewpoints shared their support for my freedom of religion. Butker then went on to say that he regrets nothing and will continue to stand firm in his beliefs. But as to be expected, the more I've talked about what I value most, which is my Catholic faith, the more polarizing I have become. It's a decision I've consciously made and one I do not regret at all. So if you are expecting some sort of apology or him to backtrack, you're not gonna get one. It's not gonna happen. And if you are one of the 227,000 people who signed that change.org petition demanding the Chiefs to release Butker, that's not gonna happen either. Butker's teammates, Kelsey and Mahomes, have weighed in on this, basically saying that while they don't agree with everything that Butker said, they still respect him as a person and say what any real sane person would say about this, that Butker is entitled to his beliefs and they're not gonna judge a man for that, especially in a free country where you are expressing your religious convictions. Andy Reid basically echoed the same and Roger Goodell himself said that the NFL is full of players with a diversity of opinions and thoughts and that's something they treasure and ultimately what makes society better. And with that, that's most likely the end of the Harrison Butker conversation for now. Love it or hate it, it looks like nothing is gonna come from this, which is what was expected, at least in my opinion, and uh, that's perfectly fine. All right, would you guys believe me if I told you even more Chiefs players are in the news for not so good reasons? Well, you better buckle up, because there's yet another one, allegedly. Before I get there, I do wanna talk about Rashi Rice real quick, who's going through it himself. Um, he was seen at the Dallas Mavericks and Timberwolves game over the weekend. You also saw Mahomes, Kelsey, and Hollywood Brown, which is pretty awesome. Interestingly enough, Rashi Rice was sitting in a different spot than the other three were, probably for PR reasons. A good idea to maybe have yourself separated from them. And you did see Kelsey and Rice together either before or after the game. You can see them in a photo right here. So I don't know what capacity they were hanging out, but they did at least see each other in some capacity, even though they didn't sit together. I'm not super bothered about that fact that they weren't together. I don't think there's any drama. It's just more of a PR thing. And speaking of PR, Rice was seen giving water and pizza out to a local community. Some saw that as a great thing. Some saw that as a, eh, we didn't forget what you did, buddy, even though you're trying to pull this little PR stunt. You know, either way, it's got mixed opinions no matter what he is going to do from here on out. You should probably just lay low, put your head down, grind and work. Nothing wrong with serving your community, but some did have a problem with him documenting it. Let me know if that was an issue to you. Like if you're gonna do stuff for the community, do you really need to put it up on social media for all to see? I don't know. I don't really care either way as long as the guy is staying out of trouble. Yeah, but just let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. And then before we get any further into this video, um, there is another Chiefs player that has been making his rounds through the news, and it's not for good reasons. If you look at this, defensive tackle Isaiah Bugs, that's a guy, a veteran NFL player. He played with the Lions, the Steelers. He was signed by the Chiefs in January to a futures deal. It was a guy that was looking to beef up the interior of the defensive line, okay? 
This is a guy that maybe was going to make the 53-man roster. You never really know. He was definitely a contributor in past years. But when you're making headlines like this, it is allegedly. But it's just another one, dude. How many times must we endure this from Chiefs players this offseason? Your guess is as good as mine. But anyway, let's, let's get into this article real quick. Bugs has been accused of animal cruelty in Tuscaloosa per documents filed in the uh, county's district court on Wednesday. It's animal cruelty is what's going on here. He's been accused of animal cruelty. And what's going on is he's expected to face misdemeanor criminal charges in the case. But the civil position says that on March 28th, the police department received info of two dogs being left on the back porch of an address, a house that he used to rent or own. And when the animal control officers arrived, they found a gray and white pit bull on the screened in back porch surrounded in feces with no access to food or water. They found a black Rottweiler mix locked in a metal cage in direct sunlight with no access to food or water. The dogs were actually seized on March 28th due to both being severely malnourished, emaciated, and neglected. The residents also appeared to be abandoned. Neighbor told police that the dogs had been on the back porch for at least 10 days. As somebody who has my own dog, Casey is right here. You could literally see her laying down here. That's actually insane. Uh, I could never imagine doing that to another animal. They are like family. So the house was indeed being rented to Bugs. It was his property. And uh, the lease was terminated on April 15th due to owing $3,100 in back rent with witnesses saying that Bugs had moved out of the house. So he wasn't there, but the dogs were? You're not going to bring your dogs? I don't understand that. The pit bull was euthanized in April by the animal shelter after becoming increasingly aggressive and failing heartworm treatment at the shelter, which freaking sucks, they had to put that dog down. His Rottweiler is still alive, but only weighed 52 pounds when it arrived at the shelter and also tested positive for Parvo. They're still taking care of that animal at this point in time. And then they're pending a ruling in court over whether Bugs should be allowed to own this dog or any other animals. Anyway, right now he basically has two misdemeanor warrants out that have been tamed for second degree cruelty to dogs or animals. We'll see what comes of it. I don't know what the Chiefs are going to do here, but this is not great news. Why, why can't you just take care of your animals and be a decent human being? I don't know. This is allegedly as well. So we're still waiting to see the result of this. But if guilty, this is pretty bad, man. You can't leave your dogs unattended on your back porch for 10 days, covered in feces, no food, no water, direct sunlight in a cage. Like what? That is absolutely insane in this day and age. Innocent until proven guilty, but we will wait to find out more. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this, because good God, man. Good God, it never ends this off season. Now, before I hit export, it's worth noting that Isaiah Bugs has responded, sort of via, I believe, his agent, Tom Pelissero, is on it, saying, statement from Chief Defensive Lineman Isaiah Bugs' oh, his agent, sorry, not lawyer, agent, Trey Robinson, who says his client has been the subject of police harassment and arrested two times over his refusal to close his Tuscaloosa hookah joint. The statement goes on to say that they believe they're trying to smear his name as a part of an ongoing submersive campaign to force the close, the closing of his local business, King's Hookah Lounge. So very interesting. The very end of this says that Bugs plans to bring to light all this information of them smearing him, arresting him without formally listing it as part of his defense of the allegations and charges filed against him and his reputation and business. So as of right now, it is going to be a back and forth thing and we will see what comes to light. I just hope and pray that those were not his dogs because that is pretty freaking awful. Whoever's dogs they are, I hope they find them and they charge them to the fullest extent of the law and never let them own an animal ever again. Next up, a clip recently made its rounds on social media that showed Kylie Kelsey, that's Jason Kelsey's wife, getting into an altercation of sorts, a verbal altercation. She was actually seen getting in the face of some drunk lady. Apparently, the this lady asked if she could take a picture with them, but Kylie politely turned her down saying, no, we're on a date. And that lady did not like that, saying something to really set Kylie off. You could hear her talking to this lady, getting in her face and telling her, I can smell the alcohol on your breath. You're embarrassing yourself. And while I respect Kylie for letting that lady know what's good, she probably could have handled business as well if needs be, I still can't help but laugh 
or at least chuckle at the fact that Jason Kelsey, he's just standing there like this with his hands on his hips, <laughs> just evaluating the situation, taking it all in. In fact, he seemed a bit entertained by the whole ordeal, and I cannot wait to hear what he has to say about this in an upcoming podcast. Then, former chief Frank the Shark Clark recently signed with the Katz Brothers, which is the same agents that Chris Jones, Byron Pringle, Demarcus Robinson, and a few others have as their representation. They're certainly not fan favorites here in KC. Most people, in fact, hate them. You know, when Chris Jones held out all the way to week one last year, was seen sitting in a suite watching his team lose with the wannabe bodyguards next to him. However, their goal was ultimately achieved when they helped get Chris Jones a big old bag. And that's ultimately all you can ask for of your agents, whether you think they did it in a good way or not. The reason why I bring all this up is because Frank Clark signed with them, it was announced, and some people were confused in the comments thinking that the Chiefs signed him. To be clear, Frank Clark is still a free agent, and I'm not sure what the future of his NFL career will look like after an odd 2023 season that featured him getting let go from both the Broncos and the Seahawks. Someone that came in to replace Frank Clark was actually Charles Aminahue, who sadly tore his ACL in the AFC Championship game last year, and is now about three months, just over three months removed from surgery, rehabbing and trying to get back to playing at some point this season. Off script, but he started a YouTube channel recently covering his rehab and recovery process. A link is in the description if you wanna to subscribe to his channel and show some support. But while it most likely will be sometime during the second half of the season, when Aminahue returns, teammate, defensive back Nazi Johnson, the Chiefs' third-year corner, who is six months ahead of Aminahue from his own ACL repair, said that Charles is actually looking a bit ahead of schedule. When he first tore it, he called me and, and, you know, I was telling him how things go, keep his head up and everything. But, yeah, he's he's looking at what I'm doing now and thinking he could do that now. And I was like, bro, you got to calm down a little bit. But also, he's actually doing really well. He's actually ahead of his time right now. And I was just telling him everything that he needs to focus on um, if he wants to get back and playing um, at a high level in the season. Nazi himself was having a great training camp last year, even working with the first team defense before tearing his ACL that ended his entire season before it really started. The good news here is he is almost back and ready to go, saying he's 90% uh, ready. Really wonderful, man. Obviously, I did turn my ACL um, back in camp, but I mean, I'm not nine months now and i think i'm about about 90 percent um so they have me out there running jumping cutting and everything like that with a brace on i'm not medically clear to do um team work yet nazi can't yet participate in team drills just like teammates of minihue as well as brian cook but nazi thinks brian cook will be good to go sooner rather than later uh he's a work in progress i mean we're both trying to figure out our limitations with our injuries we both have certain, you know, groin pains with our injuries and certain cuts and stuff, you know, feel difficult than others, but he's on the right path. Um, we're both going to be reporting to rookie uh, camp early, so we got time to, you know, work out the kinks, but he's going to be fully back by time camp. And that's some good news there about Brian Cook. We have heard very little about him. And for my full interview with Nazi, where we talk much more in depth about a bunch of subjects, ACL recovery, Juan Thornhill reaching out to him. It's it's a really good interview. Talk about his foundation as well. Feel free to check that out here. And until next time, tomorrow, when Andy Reid and others speak to the media after their OTA practice, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.